extend a very cordial welcome to each and every one of you as we gather on this third Sunday after the Festival of Epiphany. And uh, we have good news to begin our service today that announced the birth of Ada June McClay. Uh, she came to the world on January the 20th. Our congratulations to the grandparents, Steve and Denise, today. And the, to the parents uh, are Colby and Erica McClay. So we are just rejoice at this new life that has come into our community and to the region. And congratulations to you and all the very best to Ada June. So, and I assume they're doing well, all doing well. Is that right? The father also? <laughs> Good. Okay. It's important that the father does well, you know. He's been under a lot of stress. So, any other announcements for us today? No, there's no other announcements. Then let us join. You may remain seated until the benediction. And let us re open with, we are called to be God's people. Verse 1 of number 580. join our voices together in opening prayer. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people whose goodness cascades over all creation. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace! Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Before we enter into this time of prayer, I failed an announcement regarding our organist, Mary Lou. Mary Lou had a stumble accident taking down our Christmas decorations, I guess, a week ago today. Is that right? And she injured her right leg. But being an Ostendorf, <laughs> she, she <laughs> arrived in, <laughs> in a wheelchair and made her way up to the Argonne Council. And we're happy to have you with us today, Mary Lou. Thank you very much, and we pray God's blessing upon you and God's healing power to be upon you to relieve the pain that you are, are in at all times. So, guided by Christ, made known to the nations, 
Let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians that all proclaim the good news of your reconciling love. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation that you raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. For those who are sick, distressed, are grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, that in the midst of suffering, your peace and mercy surround them. For our congregation and community, for families big and small, that your steadfast love serves as a model for all relationships. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time our scripture lessons will be shared with us by Shirley and Darlene. Good morning. The first lesson is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present farm of this world is passing away. The psalm today is Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. The refrain is, God is my rock and my salvation, Never shall I be moved. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. God is my rock and my salvation. Never shall I be moved. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. God is my rock and my salvation. Never shall I be moved. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in exhortation and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. God is my rock and my salvation. Never shall I be moved. Once God has spoken, twice I have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. God is my rock and my salvation. Never shall I be moved. A reading of the Holy Gospel from Mark 1, 14 through 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake. 
for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel lesson begins with some alarming words and then some extraordinary invitations. The alarming word that began our gospel lesson was now after John was arrested. John the Baptist was arrested. Then Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying that time is fulfilled. Then Jesus passes along in a very detailed description along the Sea of Galilee and sees some people who are fishing. Now it is the norm if you are in the Holy Land and you're at the Sea of Galilee, even yet today, you will see people fishing on the Sea of Galilee. There will also be a number of recreational sailboats and other craft. But Jesus walked along that sea and sees Simon the brother of Andrew casting a net and says, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And also he has Andrew and there and asks him and they both dropped their nets, left their nets and followed Jesus. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. Kind of a stranger, you think about that, kind of an, a very dramatic event just took place in that family. There we have Zebedee and his two sons along with hired people, uh, Simon and Andrew, fishing together. And Jesus sees them and calls them and they hop out of the boat without even hesitation. We're apparently led to believe. And they follow and they leave their dad, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men, end of that gospel lesson. Well, in looking up sources for this text, I came across this about a beginning for a sermon time. It says, outside a fire company in Pennsylvania, there's a sign that stands advertising for volunteers. The sign reads, members wanted, cool hat, Sweet ride, no pay, odd hours. While the sign describes the nature of a volunteer job, and especially of a volunteer fireman, and its unpredictability, it humorously plays up that word cool. It's a cool hat and a sweet ride. Aspects of being a firefighter. But it's more than that. Being a firefighter not only gives a sense of purpose, but has an exhibit of good will toward others, know they make a difference, a profound difference, in every community in which they serve. Firefighters are known to be a tight communal group of people supporting each other and lifting each other up and having each other's backs. The station provides a place of gathering, communication, and they are 
have relationships that last throughout a lifetime and are meaningful. A similar sign could have been placed, I suppose, to host a wanted, help wanted sign for Jesus for a job of fishermen. Those categories might be these, fresh salt air, strenuous labor, long hours, tedious work. If we could have a glance into our future, would we take it? Would we take a look at our lives, even tomorrow, or five years, or 10 years, or 20 years from this date? Would we take a look at that? If I handed you a postcard, what message would you send to your future self? It reminds me of movies like It's a Wonderful Life or Back to the Future. Well, we can't go back to the future. We can't even live in the future. We live in the present. But we can imagine the changes we would make if our future self could send us a message. But what message would we send to our future selves? For me, any message that would be three words that the present me sends to the future me would be these, cherish the moment. How important it is. Jesus understood that and the disciples, the first called disciples, understood the moment to cherish that moment and they responded. God calls us. We may look back with longing or gratitude or regret for some random moments in our lives we look back at certain moments and remember these were moments that changed our lives, defined us for who we are, defined our future. A biblical moment to cherish is this, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. First, cherish the moment when we were chosen to become ambassadors of hope by God. When we were chosen, adopted in baptism as an infant, called into the service of God to follow. That is what fishing for men and women is about. In verse 15, Jesus says that time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. We are representatives of the kingdom of God. No matter what world events happen, no matter the political realities, our economic pressures, we are to be ambassadors of hope. For our hope is in the one who calls us by name, preserves us and strengthens us. The Holy Spirit revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. We share that good news. First, we take it into ourselves and ask ourselves, do we believe this? We are recipients of an abundant life in this world today and the world to come. So often we get sidetracked, but Jesus wanted to make sure that as many people share in this hope as possible. That's why he called disciples. That's why we are disciples and called to share the good news to spread the hope of God's love, accepting it in our own lives and sharing it with others. First, we cherish the moment we were chosen to become ambassadors, and second, we cherish the moment our lives change from being goal-oriented to being purpose-driven. What does that mean? Change from being goal-oriented to being purpose-driven. 
Well, we can be goal-oriented, but to get to the goal, we have to be driven by a purpose. What is our purpose? Many of us, I live by one, have what we call to-do lists. I have it right on my counter because I, you know, in my old age and my young age, I think of the same thing that's happening. I have to write everything down. And my calendar is very significant in my life. And I write down not only a grocery list, but the things I am to do. And it looks sometimes like it is, well, I, I met the goal today. I got two things done, or whatever it might be. But really, it has to do with the purpose of that goal. Our goals might be such things as hike the Appalachian Trail, get a promotion at work, finish the degree I started. But goals are external, men, are external measurements of achievements. Purpose is an internal motivating force that comes from our goodness, from our values and our principles. Achieving our goals may lead to success, but living with purpose leads us to fulfillment. There's the book, of course, we remember, perhaps, The Purpose-Driven Life. It's not the goal-driven life that is written in that bestseller from some years ago. It's the purpose-driven life. We have responsibilities to live for something that is beyond ourselves. We must be careful that we don't just take our own agendas and proclaim them as everyone's, but take the agenda that God gives us. What is the purpose for who we are? We have a responsibility to live beyond our own desires, to be part of healing in the world. In 1947, there was an evangelist named Bob Pierce. He traveled to China for a preaching tour while there, he met Beth Albert, who ran a ministry to lepers. Lepers were outcasts and still are today, banished or killed to prevent them from infecting the healthy. Beth came to China to share Jesus' love with those in the most desperate need. She found lepers living in a cemetery in Kunming, China. Cut off from any community, these men, women, and children were naked, starving, and dying. Beth sought to find them food, clothing, medicine. Without colleagues or support from missionary agencies, Beth determined to help these desperate people help themselves. What she did, she gathered tin cans and taught the leper colony to fill them with mud and make bricks of various sizes and to build a small house for themselves. Beth was a nurse by occupation and training. She provided medical care, but she scrounged around and found food, made bricks, taught Bible studies. Every last person in that leper colony came to know the hope of Jesus Christ because Beth committed her life to loving and serving. That was her purpose. Bob Pierce, that young evangelist, was so moved and challenged by Beth Albert mission ministry that it ignited a fire in him to serve in international missions. He went on to found an extraordinary organization, still very active and robust today, called World Vision an international mission agency providing food, clean water, educational resources, loans, grants, medical care, and the scriptures to millions of people throughout the world. Bob Pierce refers to Beth Albert as the trigger of the vision God gave me for missions. It drove me with a purpose. God's love created the world. God's love saves this world. God's love is recreating, recreating this world. Sharing God's love makes a world of difference. Jesus called the disciples. 
he called the disciples to share God's love, to have a purpose beyond themselves. If we accept not only as a goal, but more importantly, what is my purpose in life? If we share God's love as being our purpose, we will look back and forward and can say, cherish this moment when I became an ambassador of hope. Cherish this moment when my life became purpose-driven. Cherish this moment when I had the opportunity to share good news of the kingdom of God. Share this moment. What is your purpose? Let's pray and hope that our purpose is driven by love and joy and hope. This is living a purpose-driven life. May that God who created us and sustain us, may we follow with purpose our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Value the moment. Amen. This time Fred will lead us in the Apostles' Creed. and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let's go forth in peace, love, and be of a good purpose to share the hope and joy we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As Jesus called the disciples of old, he calls us also to be fishers of others and to sustain us in a purpose-driven life. We part today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a joyful day. The sun is coming out a little bit better. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs>